And back in those days, you didn't question it. It wasn't to be questioned. It wasn't allowed to be questioned. I was of the impression that the original went dormant and William Irvine mm -hmm. revived it, that there's life after the system. Yes. Wouldn't this be a great place for a gospel meeting? What kind of gospel meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Is this the true gospel, or are we talking? It or... was not common knowledge. Well, it may have been common knowledge, but it wasn't common communication. So do you think there's, like, stashes of money, cash? Well, well um, it's not talked about. That is not... That yeah. We're, that we're just... That's to be hush up. And as far as we know, everybody is in poverty. The power of deception blocks all of that out. I never, I never felt as strange, foreign in China as I did at that convention. Hey guys, so when I filmed this uh, video here, heading up to visit with Steve, um, I left pretty early in the morning after a really long day of travel and uh, an interview the day before. So I was exhausted, so it looks like I'm half dead and it probably does in this video too um, <laughs> but anyways uh, it's amazing how talking to people is amazing and it's great to connect and and share stories and learn and grow um, but it it's mentally exhausting um, not in a bad way it's just it just is so anyways I look like I'm super tired but that's because I was <laughs> hey guys Today I'm heading up to interview uh, and visit with Steve Bluba, and I've got a couple hours to drive this morning up to where he lives to meet him, and <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I'm a bit emotional because I don't know all of his story. I know Steve has posted um, a memoir of his life and his time in the work uh, and I've read quite a bit of it but he was in the work for a really really long time longer than I've been alive I don't know I've just always felt some sort of a connection to him and I'm, I'm excited to visit with him I guess I'm just trying to wrap my head around the emotional toll that being in the work would have and then to leave and to leave after a lifetime in it and to start you know you're you're not starting over in the sense that you don't have life experience but it's different I'm a bit nervous because, not to talk to him, but just because of the impact his story can have on others, and already has. Um, so, got another hour and a half to drive, but we're on the way. So I stopped and got a coffee to wake me up, <laughs> but it's, uh, I don't know, pretty watered down. Anyways, got a little bit to go, but we'll be there soon. So we're here to meet Steve. I'm not sure 
where he's coming out, but hopefully we'll find out. This is a cool little downtown here. We found him. Howdy, howdy. This is a really cool downtown. Well, it's, it's quite unique. Yeah. Nice to see you. When you say nine o'clock, you mean nine o'clock, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is the Hall of Waters down there. That's okay. The WPA project. It's supposed to have a heavy rain this afternoon. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So that'll be good. Yeah. That'll bring the tulips up. The weather has been beautiful the last couple days. How long have you been away from home? Well, this, we started traveling full time in November. Oh. But um, this time we just left on, I don't know, it's been three or four nights so far. Oh, I see. Okay. So you have more white hair since I saw you last. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was gonna have less last night. I was to get to my hair cut, but the lady wasn't up to it. Yeah. So, there's the, there's the Hall of Waters. Okay. The interior of that building is absolutely beautiful. It's got a lot of windows. A lot of windows, and that is out there is where the, the, the water bar used to be. Okay. You could come and, and step up to the bar like you was at a, at a bar and only drink water. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And people would come. I heard of a man coming from the Panhandle of Oklahoma way back in the early 1900s. Came and laid in this water and drank it for a few days and went home feeling quite well. So this is a springs town, right? This, this Natural is, springs? This is a springs town. Cool. Yeah. Oh, I don't know much of the history, but it's, uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, Harry Truman was in the Elms here the night that he was elected president. Which, oh, wow. Which is an iconic place. That is cool. Yeah. They had several hospitals that are now turned into apartments. That was a hospital, I understand. That probably focused on the water. Well, as... I don't know. I, yeah. I, I can't say. We're gonna come down here and park this thing and get out on that walk there. Exercise is good? Yeah. Okay. Now one thing you've got to see and got to admire is my walking stick. I bet you made it. No. Oh, you didn't? One of my customers did. Okay. He's an old gentleman, and he, 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 he decorates it with actual spider web. Really? You've heard of Spider-Man? Uh-huh. Well, now I know Spider-Web Man. Okay. See how it goes? That's really cool. It's very cool. So somehow he preserves that web. I, I don't know how he does it, but he is a unique individual. So I guess we have to give a little bit of background. You know, I don't have background. Well, we don't have a whole lot. <laughs> um, yeah, we, I saw you last time at my last convention. That was your very last convention? My very last You know, that was probably my last convention, too. Really? 2000. Did you feel, well, let me think. Maybe not. Did you feel as strange there as I did? Well, it's at my parents' house. See that groundhog going around? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but you could still feel strange there. Yeah, no, I, I I have to, that's not my last convention. All right. I My last convention was was later than that, um, but it was at Hermosa still. Well, at the time, I was living at the Foos Ranch, which was 12 miles across the hill mm -hmm. from there. And I went over there for two days, and that was it. Okay, so let's start back a wee bit farther. And you've written your story down yep. in quite, de quite yep. a bit of detail. Yep. Um, so we can link that in the description if people want to read that, if All that's right. okay. Whatever they want to do. 
Um, I call that the Lord's project, okay? Because I never ever had any intentions of ever writing that. Yeah. But I began waking up at night and details that I hadn't thought of in years were coming clear to my mind and I knew the Lord wanted that written down. Yeah. I I have read a lot of it. I haven't read all of it, but it's emotional to read. Is, is that right? It is. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So, for those who don't know who you are, <laughs> you were in the work for longer than I've been alive. A few years, okay? 40? A few years, okay? <laughs> well, if you do the math, I think that's what I come close to. All right. Um in a lot of different states. Yeah. And you've traveled the world. Well, part of it. So you're a wise old man. I'm more, maybe more crosswise. <laughs> <laughs> so tell, tell me a little bit about, we don't have to go into great detail, but tell me a little bit of growing up. And um, were you born into the... Truth, the Tubatu or? the Tubatu doctrine came to my mother's people in 1916. Okay. So very early on. And then <clears throat> my parents were affected by it in about 19 oh I don't know, maybe 35. Yeah. But um my immediate family were quite uh, not on the overseer's favorites list. Okay. And uh, yeah, that was interesting. So right out of right out of the get go, you were. I was surprised that he even and looking back, I'm surprised that he even accepted me. You know, to be in the work. Okay. In that ministry, I learned later that he was at a time when his. Uh, his competitor to the north was tr- attempting to invade his territory, and he was needing some validation. Okay, so competitor to the north would be another overseer. That's right. Okay. Yeah. I understand that he called in one of the bigger men up from further north to come back and fight his battles for him. And um, anyway, he he kept his uh, he kept his realm until he died. Yeah. So one thing that you'll, um, I think you have a lot of experience in is the hierarchy of how that system works. Well, and here, well, here's what I mean by that. So if you can figure that out, you've got more, more figured out than I do. Okay. But for me, it was, we had different workers in our field each year. And there was an overseer. Yep. That was the extent of it. Um, but it goes beyond that, doesn't it? Well, uh, yeah. It uh, it's a it's a very political arrangement. It really is. Yeah. So. And back in those days, you didn't question it. It wasn't to be questioned. It wasn't allowed to be questioned. If anybody came up with a question, they it was decided right there that they were never clear. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So. From the overseer, who would they report to, if you will? I don't know if that's the right word. Well, yes. Like uh, a senior overseer kind of? Uh, George was the original man when I was new. George Walker. And then uh, Andrew Abernathy. And then Taylor Wood. And I, I don't know who it is now. Okay. Yeah. But I understand that division was made over Andrew Abernathy and... Uh, Eld and Tennis would want in the main seat in the east, so they split that up and sent one of those guys to the west coast and spread their confusion further. <laughs> okay. There's some squirrels. You see this thing right over here? Yeah. I don't know exactly what that is, but I'm guessing it's a it's a well over a spring. Oh really? Yeah. Awesome. They've just kind of refurbished that in the last few years. So I have a deep appreciation for water because the place we've lived for the last four years doesn't have water. And so we've had to haul it in, truck and trailer, 
for four years. I grew up in an area like that. Yeah. So I and the groundwater was uh, salty because there was light uh, oil in the in the. Oh, interesting. And that, yeah. Ours is because there's caves. Okay. And so when you drill for a well, you hit a cave instead. <laughs> but, anyways, um. So okay, so you started in the work in your late teens. Nineteen. Yep. And one thing I found interesting that maybe you can just touch on a little bit was that you said you were guided often on the things that you... Oh, yeah. Well, you, you repeat because that's all you've got. Yeah. I mean, nothing, nothing new is fresh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... And, and, the, and that's, pretty much the, that's pretty much the pattern of the whole system. It's a, it's a matter of getting up and... Uh, Quoting your lines. <laughs> mm -hmm. I look at it when I left. I looked at it, at it as like a snow globe. So the people that are inside, everything's just revolving. Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing. Same thing. But it uh, comes yeah. around once a year. And it's called same old recipe, but fresh bread. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's this thing right here. See yeah, it? that's really cool. I'd like to know more about it. Very cool. You went into the work, and if you want a lot of details about that, I won't make you spew out your life story. I, I'd rather not. You know. um, if somebody wants to do that, they can read the memoir. Yeah. <clears throat> so w one thing that I noticed, though, is that you found grace while you were in the work. I did, with help teacher I found great help from was Watchman Nee. Okay. I understand he was a Chinese brother. And things that are accredited to him are not his, his writings. Instead, they're notes that somebody took on his preaching. Oh, interesting. Okay. His, uh, his writings are very simple. I mean, not complex, but very clear, very uh, inspiring, very, uh, in, yeah, it's just wonderful. And then I also found uh, Derek Prince's teaching very helpful. Yeah. And it became a very, very frightening thing when, I, when this was coming real to me and I knew that it was not accepted in that system. Grace. Grace. You know, I remember back when I was a kid, I remember hearing the word grace that I can remember. There maybe was more, but once in my life. And that was at a Wednesday night meeting from a lady named Grace. Wow. And that was the only time I ever remember Grace being talked about. Now, I'm going to change about. the subject, okay? There's a great flock of uh, vultures come in here and roost in these tall uh, sycamore trees every okay. year. Every year. Yep. That's really cool. They, they haven't come back yet this year. The sycamore is the white ones? Yep. Okay. Yep. There's a whole bunch of them. But that's their roost. Yeah. Cool. So you got some resistance. Did you preach about grace? I did, yeah. I, it was very frightening. It was frightening in what well, regards? Uh, for fear I'd be found out. Yeah. <laughs> I only heard one, one convention message at one time on the subject of grace. The man committed 45 minutes to it, and I'm inclined to feel that very shortly after he made all those statements that he retracted everything he said. Really? That's, that was the impression that I got. Yeah. You and I, our paths crossed when you were in South Dakota. In 2004. 2004. So, my parents live on the convention grounds, and that's when we met. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, you were, would they call like on a medical leave? Uh, I had to leave or else I was going to be dead. 
I learned. Okay. I was, I was not sleeping. And when I left in uh, June of 2003 and got to where I was going, I had no idea I was so near expired. Yeah. So you left the work by choice. I did. Mm -hmm. um, well, excuse me, I left the field by choice. Okay. And then that fall, the workers list came out and my name was nowhere on it. Okay. And I had not been consulted or anything. <clears throat> I've heard since that uh, I was supposed to have gotten an email telling somebody that I was ready for a companion, but I never responded, so they left my name off the list. If I ever got that email, I don't know a thing about it. Well, a phone that. call would have been nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even somebody coming to see me would have been nice. Mm -hmm. So that was a blessing, though. It was the, It was a very frightening experience. But it was the it was the gateway to a new and wonderful life of liberty in Christ. Amen. And uh, that's what this is all about. This is why I'm talking to people. Okay. Is because And that's what I want to talk about rather than anything else. Is I would like to know how to validate what anybody feels moved of God in following Jesus to do. Mm-hmm. I am, um, I'm wanting to... <clears throat> and by that you mean break the pattern by that or I the meaning, tradition. By that I'm meaning that there's life after the system. Yes. Yes. There's even more life after the system. Yes. There's even better life after the system. I would go as far to say that there's, there isn't much life in the system. <laughs> well, you said it right. I... I'm excited. The reason why I'm interviewing people and talking to people who have left, who Would are Christians. Would you like to use my cane a while? Would I like to use it? <laughs> no, you can't use it. <laughs> um, is, is to encourage others that the reason why we leave isn't a selfish reason. I never left. Okay. I prayed and God removed me. Yeah. yeah. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah. And therefore, I, I can't feel hard, I can't feel abused, I can't feel... It was, it was the leading of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to encourage anybody. I'm not, I'm, I, I, I refuse to tell people what to do. Mm -hmm. But if they do, whatever they do, uh, the only wise thing is to seek God as you've never sought Him before. Mm -hmm. I'm in the position, I mean, I'm of the attitude but there were Josephs in Egypt, okay? There was Esther's, wherever she was. Mm -hmm. And there was uh, Daniel's in Babylon. And God sustained them. Mm -hmm. But if and God is directing anybody out, please make sure that you're, you're moving with the direction of God. Mm -hmm. And that's wonderful. Yeah. Do we keep going or do we go back? Whatever we way? want to do. I don't, does this path keep going? It winds around okay, over here. Okay, we can go. If that's okay, are you good? Yep. All right. <clears throat> so yeah, like I was saying, that the reason is to help encourage people. Like you said, there's life after meetings. And there's abundant life because it's in Christ if we're in Him. Yeah. And you're bringing up a subject that has just been very much in my mind. What is abundant life? Okay. I mean, you've got life, okay? Natural life. Yeah. But you could be as sick as a horse and everything else, and you wouldn't have life. Yeah. Well, I've I've looked to the, I've been looking at the at the epistle to the Romans about everything, and in, in my opinion, defines abundant life. No condemnation. Peace with God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh dear, that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is the fishing river. Okay. And they say it is so contaminated that any fish out of there is, is dangerous. Really? It comes out of fish. But they still live somehow. Somehow. Yeah, um, <clears throat> Jesus says he came that we may have life and have it abundantly. Yes, yes. And I found that... <clears throat> 
I found that definition in, in, the, in the epistle to the Romans. It seems everywhere there. Yep. That's one thing that I noticed after I left. I got a new Bible. And things just started like... It's like this massive puzzle piece. And you just start putting the pieces together. And everything just starts to make sense. Well, my experience was totally different. And that's another thing that I want us to understand is that we're, we're in this together, okay? Mm -hmm. But our journeys are uniquely individual. Correct. That's we, been... all, we all come down the birth canal differently, okay? Yeah. Yeah. That's been a... Everybody I've talked to, almost everybody has mentioned that. And if it's I, so if, true. If, if I compare myself with you, I'm, I've missed it. Mm -hmm. And if you compare yourself with me, you've missed it. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that our God is so abundant and so gracious that he's made every snowflake unique. Mm -hmm. And I'll add, if we compare ourselves to Christ, we missed it too. Okay. Don't you think? Well, um, he didn't come to necessarily be my example. He came mm -hmm. to be my redeemer. Amen. I can't live up to him, but he can live in me. And, Amen. And help me along. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? It is. Yeah. Yeah. The, it's, a, it's a totally a new and wonderful way to live. This The snowflake thing, it's right. mind-boggling. Listen, let all those snowflakes pile up there in the road. Get all piled up about five feet deep. They're uniquely made, but by the time they get together, there's no difference. <laughs> yeah. But let one of them stand up and say, look, I'm the unique snowflake. Watch out for him. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I'm the snowflake. And so that <clears throat> that requires that we don't judge each other. Mm -hmm. we, we, we accept what the journeys that people are on. And if, there, if it isn't a journey from, directed by God, God will make that known. Okay? Yeah. So when you left your life... Your life had slowly, gradually changed, or not when you left, when God called you out. Your life had gradually been changing over, well, your entire life, your unique journey. Um, As you read in my memoirs, different times in my experience, this thing would well up in my spirit and heart. There's more to God than what I have. And I wanted that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't say that I've got it to the fullest extent now, but I, I have something far more than I had. He gave mm -hmm. it to me. When you left, you talked about <clears throat> you talked about getting a new Bible. Mm -hmm. When when the Lord removed me, He made it very clear, Steve, leave that book closed. There's something about God calling us alone that is very very powerful. Read in the scripture of all the people that ended up alone for a while. Look at, Paul, the, look at Saul of Tarsus. Mm -hmm. What took place those years mm -hmm. that he was alone? He had personal revel revelation, didn't he? All right. And, and I'm not saying that everybody needs to go through that. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying let's not avoid it if, if that's what God calls us to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, I remember, you know, you and I talked years ago on the phone for a little bit and I remember you had mentioned that look at look at Joseph look at Daniel mm -hmm. alone and in all their loneliness just don't start a group when you're there you go with what you've been no what no you've way. been taught no way yeah it's um... <laughs> <laughs> you know I I would refuse to have people follow me because you know what they'd have to call themselves Blue bites. <laughs> okay? And who would want to be a blue bite? That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> <clears throat> this is a cool little trail. It's quite the tree, too. Yep. You see, Excelsior Springs, you're either going uphill or downhill all the way through it. <laughs> yeah. We're right here on the brakes of the Missouri and on the brakes of the, uh, yeah, it's just a... a the terrain is extremely rough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a process. 
There was for a time, I attempted checking out a couple church communities and they simply did not fit. Why do you think that is? Well, part of it is because of my background. But at one of the places, <clears throat> I went with a friend who invited me to go with him. And uh, I sat there that Sunday morning and I got, something is not right here. And I didn't say anything to anybody. I went back the second Sunday and things are not right here. And I went back the third Sunday and still it was not, it was not right. And I was home fixing my lunch and finally it dawned on me. Their, their, their doctrine is a, you do this and God will do that. Mm -hmm. And that's where I had come from all my life. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a matter that God has done this and you, he's inviting you to partake of it. Mm -hmm. And it simply did not fit. And I didn't tell my friend about that. And uh, several he weeks, he kept going. And pretty soon he, said, he came and said, Steve, we're not going out there anymore. And his reason was the same as mine. <laughs> yeah. So you, and you've gone to another one too. Well, that's very interesting. About five years ago, I was told about a, a group. Uh, some folks had... I was in touch with them, and uh, I could tell by the way they'd been dressed that they had been to uh, an event on Sunday morning. Okay. So I just asked them, where have you folks been today? And they told me. And I said, what was the lesson? And I don't know what they told me. But then they said, next Sunday, they're going to give us, lead us into a series in Hebrews. And I thought, hooray. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to go through Hebrews with somebody. It's a tough book. And I started going, and I haven't missed. You know how us meeting people are. Mm -hmm. You go, you, you be in meeting. You're faithful. No. Oh. The only reason you can miss is, is sickness or death. Yeah. And actually, when I was a kid, when I was sick, we had Wednesday night meeting on rotation. When I was sick, I had to sit in the chair right across the closed door from meeting so I could still hear. Oh, yeah. But yeah. anyway... Um, I've become very sa feeling very safe there, and um, the thing that surprises me probably the most is the fact of what the percussionist does for me in, in the in the worship service. Mm -hmm. I envision myself as being when Moses is on the mount and I'm with the children of Israel down here, and all that thundering and lightning and earthquakes and everything else. How must that have impacted those people? Yeah. And I shared my feelings with the percussionist one day, and he says, "Well." Read in the Psalms that percussion instruments were a great part of worship. And uh, <laughs> when things are right with me, if he, he hits the right thing right, it just about puts me on my knees. It just about takes my strength away. But anyway, uh, we spent 84 weeks in the, the Gospel of Luke. And I came away knowing a Jesus that I'd never heard of before. So you still go there? Yeah, yeah, they haven't excommunicated me yet. <laughs> and now we're doing a, they're doing a series in Genesis. I had no idea there was ever such clear teaching about God and Christ in those writings. In the Old Testament. In yeah. Genesis. Yeah. It in starts Gen in the first verse. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Anyway. Well, that's good. I... And now I'm, I'm meeting on Saturday mornings with a group of men, and it is absolutely wonderful feeling their spirits and listening to their hearts mm -hmm. and listening to their words. Um, <clears throat> so our camera got cut off, but you were mentioning about a, a Bible study at, um, at, the, at the church or the fellowship that you go to. Mm -hmm. on Saturday mornings. By the way, they don't allow membership there. I like that. I do too. Yeah. No membership. If you so, want to be a member, you got to go somewhere else. So that has been uh, a real encouragement for you to, to meet with those folks. And yep. I, they have a teaching team, and uh, I have a first name contact with each of them. And I have personally gone to each of them and let them know 
that I appreciate what I'm hearing, what I'm being taught, but more importantly, I appreciate the spirit in which I'm being taught. Mm -hmm. I told that to the one man and he turned away and wept. And that's meaningful to me, you know? Mm -hmm. listen, to, listen to that blue jay. Is that what that is? Yeah. No, it isn't. It's a hawk. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. They're building a nest. Very cool. Yeah. They're building their nest. Spring is here. Spring Almost. Is here. Yeah. Not in South Dakota, but here, closer. <laughs> so, um, also, I don't know if this got cut off when the camera shut off, but you had mentioned that you're not um, recommending church membership necessarily. I am, I am not. That has to be the leading of, the go of God and whatever he opens. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, well, anyway. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's a good way to put it, just to be led by I, God. I, I refuse to have answers for anybody. Yeah. The only thing that I say in, in, con in contradiction to that is be patient with yourself, be patient with God, and be patient with everybody around you. I need patience, especially with my kids. <laughs> Well, I'm just as patient as anybody, okay? <laughs> I just use it up quicker. <laughs> okay? Yeah. <clears throat> so, you kind of just answered my question, but I always like to ask if you have any advice for people who still go to meetings. Yeah, I do. I have lots of advice. And that is, stay where you are until God opens the way for you clearly to do something different. And don't let... Dave, what's your last name? Alink. Alink, change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you have to add that you have to be willing to do what God wants you to do. There you go. All right. That's just kind of understood. Yeah. And if you're not willing right now, maybe a few days down the journey, God will have worked with you, and you'll be glad to go. I don't. I don't know. It mm -hmm. just. It's, um, well, I'm, it's exciting to talk to you because, um, well, we have something in common, our past, mm -hmm. and we have something else in common, our present and our future. Yeah, but I've got a walking stick that you don't have. Well, give me a few decades. <laughs> but it's exciting because God is the same. But like you said, we're different. But he works He works in everyone different, but beautiful for yes. the same end result. Yes. God is so abundant and so gracious that he creates every snowflake differently. And when they get all together piled up over there in that road, about five feet deep, you can't tell it any difference. Mm -hmm. Anyway, like I told you, uh, God made it very clear when he removed me to close the book and take a break. And then when I started reading again... Was that scary for you? It, it was and it wasn't. It was a kind of a relief. Okay. I can see that. And when I, I was directed to study again, I moved into the Gospel of John. And that continues to be a brand new and exciting book to me. So really, it was almost like, like a refresh. When you... When you... Well, it was, it was more like... A, Dumping a lot of garbage. Yeah. Clearing the head. And, yes. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what all else. <clears throat> John is the book of love. Yeah. God's love for us. God is the spiritual book, very spiritual. I'm communicating with a, with a brother now. <clears throat> And we're finding, he's, he's pointing out some very interesting things. One thing that has been so interesting to me... A brother in Christ? Or? Yes, okay. yes. One thing, something that have been so interesting to me is this. 
John gives no record of Jesus serving the bread and the cup. John gives <clears throat> no record of Jesus sending out apostles. Instead, they shall all be taught of God. Yeah, John's what, like 70% 70, 70 unique? Well, I wouldn't say 70%, but I, he was 70 years after the others. Okay. Well, just, I, I think a lot of things that are in John are unique to yeah. John. Oh, absolutely. Yes. But, it's nearly all unique to John. Yeah. But you would, you would, th like you mentioned, what's, what is he saying that's relevant and important Yes. at that time? And after our study on about baptism, I've discovered that John doesn't, I mean, John gives no record of Jesus teaching baptism. Yeah, I, and I don't have any answers yet. Mm -hmm. It's a journey. I've also written, discovered that everything John mentions in the first chapter is like a, is the word synopsis? Anyway, everything that he mentions in the first chapter is mentioned somewhere else in the book at least once or many times. Interesting. It's very interesting. So in the beginning, he starts at creation. Yep. And then he revisits chapter one throughout the book. That's the way I see it. I've never seen that before. I mean, I'll have you, to... You check me out. Yeah. Every, every person or every thought or every subject that is introduced in the first chapter is referred to at least once, if not many times, throughout those writings. That's very interesting. Yeah. Hey, that hawk was after this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I still... Still would make good footage. It might come at our expense, but. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, we were in the Boundary Waters. Have you ever been up there? Yep, I'd go back again if I had a chance. And uh, my name's David, so I got the nickname Davy Crockett. So I had uh, to wear the, the coon hat. Yep. And we were out in the middle of the lake paddling and this bald eagle comes and starts wow. circling, circling around our boat. That's scary. And so I don't remember who I was, but they're like, get that hat off and stick it under the seat. Yes. <laughs> I've heard, I've read of many people in the wilderness getting their necks broken. Yeah. Yep. So are you in communication with any um, active members? I am. Yep. Workers? Uh, one worker, yeah. Okay. Have you maintained some friendship with some of your companions throughout the years? I have not. Okay. No, that has not been a, that has not been a possibility. Yeah. Two men in that ministry st stayed in contact with me from, for a while until one of them told me that he needed to pull back because if the big guys knew that he was in touch with me, he would be done. And uh, the other man has stayed in, in touch. And I understand he even at a time, um, you, need to, you need to put that on, the, you need to put that on, see there? There's where we're at. The other man, I understand, even for a time, suggested people read the memoirs. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a wealth of knowledge from your entire life, and it definitely can get you to question some things, if nothing else, of what you've been taught and what you grew up with. Well, when I was first inspired to start writing that, I didn't put anybody's names to it. Okay. And I wrote for several months. And I got to thinking, am I communicating here? Am I, am I, is, is this understandable? Mm -hmm. So I solicited a team of proofreaders, about 10 people. Okay. And they said, you've got to put names to this. 
I would agree with that because I can relate to a dozen names in there. So. Well, I didn't want to hurt anybody. Yeah. But anyway, that's how those writings have come to be as they are. One, one of my proofreaders put those subtitles in there, which I think added a huge um, value to the writings. Subtitles as in? Oh, uh, like, each, each subject, you know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And those writings were made public about 48 hours. And lo and behold, a woman whose roots were in a remote area of Mexico for about 10 years. And she was just coming back to America when that came out. She read the account <clears throat> and then she said, now she feels that people will believe her own story since she's read mine. Wow. That's how you know God is using that. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the ultimate goal, I think. I mean, to be able to encourage... I, I don't want a thing to do with it. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's his project. Just for fun, let's walk up there. Okay. I've never been up there before. My breakfast is wearing out. <laughs> When you were let out of the work, did, was it, I mean, obviously it was scary because you had to create a life for yourself outside of that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm mostly talking about like naturally. Yes. <clears throat> did you have people that stood by you? I have, um, the folks on the, on the ranch have been extremely moral supportive. And since the recent crisis has come up, they have uh, realized that, I don't know how they put it, but they didn't know how to relate to me at that time, but now they do. Yeah. It's interesting because you have nothing but good things to say about them while you were there, but they couldn't. <laughs> that's, that's all that can be said. But they couldn't, but I, I can see that they couldn't quite relate to no, where you were at. No, nobody had been over my road. But it didn't matter to them. They it still. They, even though they couldn't understand, they, they were just. I don't know what I'd have done without them. I had no place to go. I think with the awareness of what has gone on and different things that more people, especially people who have left, um, want to help and want to, to do what we can, especially for workers that come out of the work because that's got to be just financially emotionally I mean I can't even imagine I can't either I, I can't either so there was others too that not really not really no no but where God leads he provides right there you go he's given me strength to have a job and now I have the opportunity of working in a tremendously wonderful community, Culver's. I didn't know it was going to be so special. It's a Christian-owned is company, it? I isn't it? Yeah, I, I think it is. But it's... Um, it's I put, could be wrong, but it's, I think it's it put me in a community where I have... They don't know my story, mm -hmm. but um, we have a tremendous relationship. I had my, my, had my hip replaced a, a year ago last month. Okay. And some of my customers took me to the hospital. Yeah? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. All right, we're going to see what this spring is. We're going to see if it is a spring. You lead the way, I'm scared. <laughs> Hear that cardinal? Yeah. That's who I thought that hawk was. 
No, I thought the hawk was a blue jay. There's leaves on those buds and leaves. Oh, already. yeah. Aha, uh -huh, it is a well. Yeah. I've never been up here before. Like I say, they've just they refurbished this in the last, I don't know, five years. Yeah, they took the handle off so you can't. Well, I suppose the vandal did that. Yeah. But anyway, wouldn't this be a great place for a gospel meeting? What kind of gospel meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Is this the true gospel or are we talking? Has to be. Look at that oak tree, man. Yeah. Look at that thing. Wow. You can answer this if you want to or not, but um, <clears throat> when did you when did you know about the origins of meetings? <clears throat> oh, um, like was that common knowledge? It or? was not common knowledge. Well, it may have been common knowledge, but it wasn't common communication. Okay. But a man. Uh, tried to enlighten me on this situation, and I just blocked it out. And I, uh, I was of the impression that the original went dormant, and William Irvine mm -hmm. revived it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, okay, I didn't know at all growing up until I was in high school, and a brother worker told me, about William and just said he was the first brother worker and God, yeah, he told him to start this up or whatever. And I didn't really think anything of it because I'm just like, oh, cool. You know, stories like that that just like, I suppose, solidify anything that doesn't actually mean anything, like a, but it solidifies the truth. You mm -hmm. know, I just kind of looked at it that way, I suppose. Um, I, I have visited... William Irvine's illegitimate son's grave in Christchurch, New Zealand. And the word there is that um, occasionally William Irvine would come through down there and ask his son, when are you going to profess in my religion? And the word is that he would say, when you treat my mother with respect, I might think about it. Now, I don't know if that's factual, mm -hmm. but that's what some of them are, who knew, who knew the illegitimate son would say. Hear that little Carolina wren? You don't have those in North Dakota. South Dakota. We have some wrens, but not. Yeah, you don't have him. Yeah. Hear him? Yep. I used to think he said, preacher, 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 preach, preach. <laughs> wrens are cool. Yep. So, did you first find out about that when you were in the work? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so then... Like I say, I just blocked it out. You just blocked it out. That's I, what, yeah. And I concluded that what Jesus, what was originally with Jesus, went dormant for a stage, and William Irvine came along and revived it. What I couldn't get over is how many people that condemns. All right. So let's say... Tell me about it. Let's say the first century church ended in <laughs> 600, I don't know, whatever you want to say, right? <laughs> um, so from 600 till 1800s, nobody heard the true gospel. There you go. And to condemn billions of people, like, that was one of the things that kind of was like, that's not right. That doesn't make sense. But... Uh... The power of deception blocks all that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another topic that I'm not very familiar with, and you don't need to name names or or anything. I, I'm not trying to throw anybody specifically under the bus or the the true two by twos at all. Any anyway, under the bus 
in general. But um, as a worker, they pride themselves on a homeless ministry, which the assumption, I think, is that you're poor and, you know, like, we're, we've let everything go to preach the gospel. Um, but then there's projects that happen and things that are very well done. For example, the meeting shed at my parents' house was built specifically for convention. On a place that has is a, pl- a flood plain? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know if the building's in a flood plain or not. But, I see. But anyway, so the money issue... Um, that is not talked about. That is not... That yeah. We're, that we're just... That's to be hush up. And as far as we know, everybody is in poverty. But that's no longer... That's no more correct than... Yeah. So you, people would give you money at like gasoline or something. Something, yeah. Or just at a visit. And then, was it always enough to buy what you needed to buy? Uh, yes, it was. I remember my first year in, in that ministry, we went from hand to mouth. Yeah. What do you mean by that? I mean, we just, that was all we had. Okay. We were renting an apartment and... Uh, it just about took everything we had to have. The apartment rent was probably $25 a month. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you're old, so. Oh, yeah. And then at the end of the year, you turned in whatever you had left. That's right. Mm-hmm. And uh, depend on the, over, the overseer how much we got. My first overseer. To start out again. Yeah, my okay. first overseer. I think we started out with 20. And the ladies got more. Yeah. Why did they get more? Uh, because he was in favor of women. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so it's that simple. So then the overseer had mostly full control over whatever was coming as in. As far then. as I know, yeah. I'm waiting to see what the FBI finds out about finances in that system. Follow the money, right? Yeah. You know, I have. I don't know if you saw this, but a response from a worker in response to the FBI investigation was, and I I can't quote this word for word, but was the fellowship is not new, the FBI, no, the fellowship is not new to the FBI. We were investigated back in the 1940s. Yeah, I read that. And he said, the FBI agreed with us or something like that. Mm -hmm. How can you compare that? Uh, Yeah, I don't know. It's totally different. So do you think there's like stashes of money, cash? Well, well um, in the last year, I'm, I'm of that impression. Big stashes. And we've all heard, you know, well, the, the, the wealthy business owner or whatever in a field can donate or you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, I suppose they, that could be a just a, a way of moving money without being noticed. When I moved into a new state one time, I learned that many of the workers that had been there a long time had seemed to have competition in collecting estates. Really? Yeah. So, like, you would get some bonus points if you reeled in a big one. I suppose. I don't know. But I'd never heard of such a thing, but I'm sure it's it's very accurate. Yeah. Well, what better use than to... Oh, of course. ...to give your money to the one and true way. <laughs> See this nice new bridge? I used to know how much that bridge cost, especially the lighting system on it, but I, forget, I don't do numbers very well. But yeah. It was massive, but it sure is a good improvement. This is an old town. This is probably had some old infrastructure. I don't still. know what I don't know what year it was established, but it's an old one, yeah. I have a brother and his wife living here. 
Your brother? My uh, brother, yeah. And she was born and raised here, and she is a she's a member of a huge clan here. Okay. She's related to almost everybody and all their cats. <laughs> Do you have a good relationship with your family? Fairly so, yeah. You have like I was the youngest. Of... I'm the youngest of ten. Wow, okay. We're five remaining. Well, I appreciate your time. It was really good to see you after so many years. Yeah. I think about you often, and I, your journey is um, your journey, but it is an inspiration to me because of what God has done in well, me. Well, like I tried to mention to you earlier, I don't forget your kindness at my last convention. I don't remember being kind to you. I do. <laughs> but... Anyway, so it wasn't of me, I guess. I never, I never felt as strange, foreign in China as I did at that convention. I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time and, and willingness to visit. I know sometimes it can bring up memories that are painful, and um, but like you said, um, we have joy in Christ now. Yes. And so it's good. And the Good Shepherd helps us with all that pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay? for sure. See there, the car unlocked. Just by being next to it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, just wrapped up my time with Steve. Uh, spent a little time with him after our interview and just kind of visited. Um, <clears throat> the camera cut out somewhere in the middle of our interview, so hopefully we, hopefully I didn't miss too much. Um, but if I did, I, well, by this time you already know, but I'll go back and I'll just insert maybe a little bit of what he said there. Um, but one thing that Steve wanted to be clear on is that uh, he didn't reach out to me to do an interview. I reached out to him. And he doesn't want to uh, get any recognition or um, become famous or whatever you want to say um, but he wants God to get the glory and God and to share what God has done in his life um, anyways I and you know that's I didn't see it that way um, but I just want to relate that to the viewers that you know he he wasn't doing it for for fame if you will um, and I can, I can sincerely, I can tell you that he was sincere in that. Um, so I just wanted to put that in there, but it's really cool to be able to see what has, his life has been transformed and the hardships that he went through, but the joy on the other side. And it's just amazing, um, his, his outlook on life is great and promising. And so I think that probably came through during the interview. But thanks for watching. I hope this was an encouragement to you as it was to me. Um, and we'll see you down the road. Music